great to see everyone. Uh, thank you for praying for me. Uh, the covenant journey that I took for one week uh, to the States, uh, it, was a, it was a time period of uh, camp, uh, really uh, finding the darkness uh, and shining the light. Um, so it was a really great time. Have you guys uh, been okay? Yes? For the last <laughs> 10, 10 days? Why don't, why don't we, uh, why don't we uh, greet each other, say, how are you doing these days? Huh? How are you doing these days? Don't just ask, answer, please. <laughs> um, I hope that you guys are doing great. Um, and today is the greatest signpost, the Tyrannist Movement. What's a signpost? Anybody? What is it? Signpost? Um, you know, signpost includes your entire journey. Right, so if you have a journey, let's say you're going from uh, Seoul to Busan, that's your entire journey, right? And there's some turning points that you have. I don't know. From here, you could take uh, the Gyeongbu Highway. I don't know what is in 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 uh, Korean. Gyeongbu Highway. You gotta take it, and all the way, and or you could take the I think it's a Chungju, Chungju Highway. So if you want to go on to Chungju huh, Highway for a while, you gotta make a turn, right? So at that turn, what do you have? Signpost. So if you miss the signpost, you will, um, you will waste a lot of time because you have to go around, right? So if you're a child of God, the moment that you became a child of God, and t till the end, the end of this life, God is definitely guiding you. Okay? So even if you make the wrong turns, God will guide you. Amen? Let's bless the people next to you. God is guiding you. And one more time, God will guide you. Okay? Even if you make a mistake. But... Mistake meaning you miss the signpost, right? But if you don't miss the signpost, you will not waste any time. You will not go around. So these signposts are given to you by God at what? At different time. And we call that different time schedule. So if you can read the signpost, then you know your time schedule. Clear, right? You know where you are. So these signposts are can be found as you do three things. Three things. And you don't have to be perfect at it, okay? You just need to do your own thing here. Your own level, let's say. You know, I'm not married, but if I have a son, you know, I think I will really love my son. You know, I think I'll, I'll be a, I want to be my best friend to my son, best teacher and best brother in a way, right? But if my son is only five years old, I wouldn't expect him to solve calculus. Right? Because only he's five years old, right? So it's really not about uh, matching God's expectation. God, God's expectation is right at where you are. God's expectation always is right at, at, the, at the moment of your growth. 
You understand? Okay? So don't feel pressured. No matter what, don't feel pressured. Just do, just do as much as you can. Okay? Let's bless the people next to you. Don't feel pressured no matter what. Because that's in a way, it's a wrong understanding. You're understanding God in a wrong way, you know. Because God's right there at where you are. Even if you're so sinful, if you're a child of God, God is right there in your sinful lives. Do you know that? Even at the moment of you making the sin, God is right there and he's praying for you. Romans chapter 8 if you can read the entire Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 talks about how God is praying for you 24 hours. Jesus Christ is praying for you 24 hours. Okay? So how can you find the signpost? If you find it, you will know your time schedule. If you know your time schedule, this is a little hard to understand, but if you know your time schedule, you are, you are very stable. You're very stable. You're not going to worry about your future. You're going to enjoy your today. You're not going to be in your past always thinking about you know, who, who did, who said what to me. You're going to enjoy today because you will know your accurate mission. You cannot do world evangelism right now. You cannot go and evangelize. Maybe, maybe you cannot make 20,000 people accept, <laughs> right? You're, if you have your mission, basically, if you know what to do today, if you know what is that you have to focus on today, not, the, not, the things, not just the things that your teachers tell you or your parents tell you what the world expects, the things that, the things that is very right, you know what I mean? This is the right thing that I just need to focus right now, today. If you know that, then you can just enjoy your today, focus your today, not worry about your future, because this is the very right thing, right? If you do the very right thing, right full results will come, yes? So that, that is accurate mission. So accurate mission can be found if you know your time schedule. You know, like you're going to Busan and like, you know, you're on, you're like passing Daejeon and there's no speed limit there, then you gotta what? Speed up, right? That's your accurate mission. But if there's a speed, speed limit like 80 kilometers, you shouldn't speed up, right? So if, you're, if you are speeding, speeding up when you should speed up, there's nothing to worry about getting a citation from police officer, right? You understand? So if you know where you are, you know what to do. But how, how can you find where you are if you get the signpost? And this signpost is, is told, uh, God tells you. God tells you this signpost and how when you are praying. So remnants, pray at all times. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Pray at all times in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is in you already, so pray at all times. You walk, you're walking by and you see a Starbucks coffee, pray for Starbucks coffee, amen? <laughs> pray for its support for the homosexuality, because they, they will support, because that's the trend. They will do it. They don't have the gospel. You know, speaking of homosexuality, you should love those people because that's a spiritual problem. That's not their fault, you understand? They're not abnormal. In a way, every single person who's born into this world is abnormal because every single person is sinner. Do you know that? So if uh, homosexual, homosex, homosexual people, they need Christ, they need Christ more than non-homosexual people, that doesn't make sense. Every single person is born with original sin, so they need Christ in the same way, right? It's just that their mani manifestation, spiritual, the manifestation of the spiritual problem for them is homosexuality. So, gospel says, everyone who did not meet with God is like the trees uprooted in the ground, is like the fish outside of water, right? So everyone who did not meet with God is spiritually 
spiritually handicapped. Everyone, every single, even a baby, this really beautiful baby that is just born, but unfortunately that baby is not a child of God, right? Everyone. Anyways, prayer. That's the method. Pray at all times, because that's going to make your spiritual state. Are you thinking about different things? Turn your, thi turn your thoughts to prayer. Okay? And then, the signpost will be given in the word. That's the content. And it, this signpost being given happened already many times to many remnants and many different people already, right? Evidence. So all you need to do is just confirm. So do you know the signpost that David read? You know, Joseph read it when Potiphar's wife try to seduce him. He read it as a signpost. So he was already ready to go to the prison. He was expecting God's answers in prison because God's now taking him to the next stage. Understand? Signpost. So all those things are already happening. It's, in the, it's recording the history in the Bible. So all you need to do is Confirm that. Know about it. Know about Joseph, David, Paul, Timothy, and everyone. Know about it. Because the same spirit is the same spirit of God is residing in us. Amen? Same spirit of God is guiding us. Same. It's not different, God. We don't believe in God of fire, God of sun or the moon. We believe in the same God and the same same God is in us through the Holy Spirit. So confirm about the confirm about the history. Especially what? Church history and seven remnants. Confirm. Just as much as you can. So if you are doing this, this signpost will be read to you. You are you have the spiritual state ready. You have the you, you already have the knowledge about it. And you know the flow of the history. And that you know that your, your existence and your life, your today is right in that same flow of the history. So you will, be, you will naturally interpret why these problems are happening. Why this problem and why this time. And not only that, God is God of wisdom. Amen? God gives you wisdom. When you are in the right place. <clears throat> so, so if you're doing this, you're enjoying the blessing of Barisen. What does that mean? Barisen is not just about the light. <clears throat> so, you are the watchman that God has called, and you have the partisan, okay? So, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, it says, you are the light of this world, okay? Why? Because John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4 Jesus Christ is the true light, not the fake one, true light, and Christ has come inside of you, so you are the light. You have the light. So you have the light, okay? This portion is talking about you having the light, but just because you have the light, that doesn't mean that it shines, right? Let's say this is the light. Can you see it? Can you see it now? Do I have it or not? I have it, right? So body isn't meaning this light shines through you. Let it shine. You have the light already in you, 
and that light is Christ, and Christ is the God of creator. Christ is the light that there is none of the darkness that can defeat. Light absolutely defeats all darkness. All darkness will flee. All the demons and the demon-possessed people will flee, and they will kneel down before you if you what? Have the light? No, if you shine it. So how can you shine it, right? How? When you enjoy the blessing of prayer, word, and evidence by, its, by the method and the content and confirming it, it naturally shines. The moment that you are starting to turn your complaints and thoughts and questions into questioning it to God, you're praying it to God, you're just throwing that prayer to God, that itself is the light shining, okay? Because there's no, there no works of Satan that can interfere between you and God when you pray, okay? And the moment that you go into the word and the moment you confirm the evidence. So how can we do this? Today we're going to go to the conclusion first. Hallelujah. Maybe I'm going to end it here. <laughs> I'm just going to end it with the conclusion. And you might say, you know, hey, I want to enjoy this. Hey, Pastor Dave, I want to enjoy this. But how? The blessing of being a remnant is that you guys are still young, so it is rightful for you to be, for you to be guided. So, um, I received a calling, very comfortable calling from God to be your guide. I'm gonna guide you one by one. Feedingly, feedingly to each person. So that you can experience. Remnants, it's nothing wrong with you. There's no fault in you. If you, have, if you don't have the experience yet, okay? You are in the seat where the experience is coming to you. Do you have your own way of prayer? I want to ask you, do you have your own, what is it, uh, routine? Like if you just do it, if you do, just do this routine, it revives you. You know, you have a different spiritual state all of a sudden. That's what prayer is. Every time you pray, if you have the my prayer, every time you pray, it restores you. Because God loves you and God is with us. Prayer, at the moment of prayer, you, you come out of that prayer routine, you're restored. You have a fresh start. My prayer. Do you have your own answer? Answer to drive out the disbelief. You know, Satan will not stop. Satan will always give you disbelief, right? But as long as you have the answer, Satan gives you a thought, you know, hey, look at you yourself, or blah, 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 you know. Makes you think about a certain person, hey, that person has done this to you, and he will do that again, or, you know. And makes you just be afraid of, like, you know, who knows what's going to happen, you know. When Satan gives you that kind of thought, it's very simple. Just, you just need to have the answer, to what? To tell Satan, to tell that thought, hey, that's not true. But if you don't have the answer and you just tell him, that's not true, <laughs> you know what I mean? Satan knows that it's the empty, empty, what is it? Empty proclamation. You gotta have a proclamation that has the answer in it, right? But this answer is God's word. So if you have the answer, if you have God's word that is the answer to you, that is my word, okay? My evidence. Do you have your own evidence? 
you know, it is very natural for the remnants to not really have my evidences. So, and also, you know, if you have a lot of evidences, that means you had a lot of, a lot of things that you went through already. But it's kind of abnormal for you to go through a lot of things, you know, when you're young, right? So when it comes to evidence for the remnants, the evidences will come to you, okay? So it is very important for you to believe in that in advance. Believe in advance that evidences, evidences will come to me, right? But for you to believe in advance, you got to confirm what happened in the history and the seven remnants. Okay? For me, you know, it's the time, the time, what is, the time gap is a little bit different, but the, the journey of Moses, right? Remnant Moses in the Bible have a very similar guidance that happened to me, uh, to my life. You know, I was born in Korea, you know, uh, under the parents of the covenant, just like Moses, you know, being Jewish, knowing the covenant ever since he's young, but now he knows the Egyptian culture, Egyptian uh, education for me, the culture and education in America, right? And then he goes to the wilderness, and wilderness is the time where God refines him. You know, he lets him throw away useless things, useless ideologies, useless values, you know, all these things. And wilderness, I'm going through a time of wilderness, and now I'm reaching up the Mount Horeb. During the wilderness, Moses was taken to Mount Horeb where he met with God one-on-one -on -one in a very deep manner, concentration manner, right? Just one-on-one. -on -one. And he even had a, he even forum with God. He had forum with God about his disbelief. God, I cannot go. I'm not good at speaking, all that, you know what I mean? Very sincere, deep forum and the time of healing and, you know, for God to raise him up as a spiritual summit, giving him the faith that it is not you, but I will be with you with my right arm. God telling him, God telling him, giving him the covenant, the time scores of Mount Horeb. For me, in Korea, and especially in these years, uh, starting last year and about three, four years in these years is the Mount Hora for me. That's the reason why I'm going to pastor use messages on site for every single thing. Because I know that it's my time schedule. So I'm very expecting and anticipating my future because I'm, I'm doing the, the very accurate thing that I should be doing in my time schedule, which is Mount Horeb. After Mount Horeb, God sends Moses back to the back to Egypt and he performs his works for one thing to restore the blood covenant in Egypt so I personally confirm my evidences of today and my future evidences So how, if you ask me, how will I guide you um, to this experience? I'll guide you one by one and also one on one. You know, I, I received this assurance uh, actually in this uh, first uh, service. How will I guide you? For 40 days. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Just like how Jesus did for 40 days. So, you, so I'm not gonna like, uh, I'm not gonna hold on to your neck and like drag you for 40 days, of course. Uh, you're gonna be doing it on your own, personally. But I will be open for that person 24 hours. I'm open for your questions, you know, little, uh, very little questions, big questions, or, you know, prayer requests, or whatever it is. You know, you want me to share the gospel to somebody, whatever it is, I'm, I'll be open to you for 24 hours for that 40 days. 
So for 40 days, it will be basically up to April 30th. You know, I, I want you to think about this in a very comfortable manner. Why? Because you, you don't have to do it. Not everyone has to do it. You know, I thought about it and prayed to God because I really want to focus on that individual. And, um, you know, if, if it's like 20 people, I cannot focus on 20 people, right? So for the remnants in our youth worship, only for the remnants here, okay? Adults, I'm going to talk about it in the adult worship. Three to five remnants. You know, this is not a very serious thing. You know, this, uh, you know, if you had been praying about this kind of uh, concentration already, if you feel like you need to be prepared spiritually, then you just need to apply. Okay? Apply it by today. You know, there's no need for us to wait, you know, till tomorrow for you to think about it. You know, just if you are inspired right now, apply. And if you have been praying for this kind of thing, apply. I'm not going to be teaching you because in, in that way, I'm going to, I'm playing, I mean, I'm sitting in the seat of God. You know, I'm not God, right? But I'm going to be guiding you what is the most fitting prayer to you. It might be breathing. It might be, you know, your prayer you know, method. And I'm going to be very, try to be very precise, take you just one step by one step. Very pleased. The most fitting, the most comfortable prayer to you and the word. And also, I'm going to lead you to know about the church history and the seven remnants. Basically, I'm going to give you the, the missions that you can do. If you want to read, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, what is it? Uh, if you want to read about 50 chapters of the Bible, hallelujah, 50 chapters, <laughs> then, I, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, okay, then why don't you read Exodus chapter 1 through 50, because that's the, that's the evidence of Moses and the Israelites. But if you say, oh, Pastor, I just want to read three chapters this week, okay, then I'm going to try to find the three chapters for you, maybe Exodus chapter 1 through 3, because that's a, 1 through 3 contains about 80 years of Moses' life already. So very fittingly to you, apply today to who? To Teacher Jenny. Everyone knows who Teacher Jenny is? Raise your hand, please. So three to five. So the first three to five people, the first come, first served, basically. So the faster you tell her, you will be in the three to five people. Once again, <clears throat> I'll be your guide and your counselor. I'm not going to do it for you because that's, that's not going to be anything to you. <laughs> but I'll be your guide and counselor open 24 hours. So I'll be your uh, convenience store. I'll be your CU and GS25. Hallelujah. <laughs> For 40 days. Anytime. Just text me anytime. If I'm awakened like 2 a.m., I'll reply to you right away for 40 days. So let's, for those of you who are inspired by the Spirit of God right now or you've been praying, apply to Jenny, Teacher Jenny, right away. And then if, if, if it's only one person applies, I'll do it with, I'll, I'll spend the 40 days with that one person. But no more than five people. Okay, so that you can actually confirm prayer, word, and evidence, and your spiritual state will be very ready 
with the method, you know the method, with the content, with the confirmation about the history, and if your spiritual state is ready, you will read the accurate signpost. Why? Because it's the same God. Why am I talking about this? Because that's what happened in the Tyrannus. What happened? Preparation happened. Before the last ministry, what is it? Before the last ministry in Israel and going on to the field of Roman Empire, the preparation happened. What was the preparation? Baptism of Holy Spirit. What was it? Filling of the Holy Spirit. Filling of the Holy Spirit is not some emotional thing. If you're filled by the Holy Spirit, you clearly have, you clearly know how to pray. So you could pray anytime in the school bus, even. If you really have my prayer, then you could even pray. While, while you are talking to your friend, you know that? You're talking with your friend, friend, but you can pray at the same time. That's, the, that, that's when your light is shining upon your friend and that place. Why? Because when you pray, the spirit of Christ works. Amen? When you don't pray, he will be with you forever. <laughs> he will be in you forever. But when you pray, he works. That's why Jesus told the, uh, the people who conquered Roman Empire to what? Devote yourself, devote yourselves to prayer. Only prayer. And prayer becomes your enjoyment. You don't have to do like a prayer that is not fitting to you. The prayer, find the prayer that's most fitting to you. Two lifelines. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Prayer is your lifeline because you are created in the image of God to always be connected with God. Remnants, if you're playing video game, pray, amen? Connect with God when you connect with the PlayStation, okay? I'm serious, I've done that. Connect with because God does not condemn PlayStation. When Satan uses PlayStation, he, he you know it's it's for his uh, sake. But when God is with you, you will conquer PlayStation. You will your spiritual state will not be swindled or you, it will not be shaken. God does not. God is not afraid of sin. It doesn't mean that you should sin. Okay, but. God is loving you. God is praying for you with tears when you are sinning. He's with you. Pray. Okay? Then you will know what to do at that place of sinful place, if you go to a sinful place. Really, you know, all those of you, know, when you go to college, you're going to be drinking and all, you're going to be invited to different places. Don't go there too, too many times, but if you have to go because it's your friend's birthday, Pray when you go there. Connect with God. Recognize, God, I know that, I, I believe that you are with me right now. God, I'll be the most confident child of God in this place. I am the conqueror spiritually here. You might not be the most famous friend or, you know, the most you know, smartest student or whatever, you know, but you are the spiritually conqueror in this place. Amen? That's what happened to me. So when I went to my friend's uh, birthday party, I drank, yes, I drank alcohol, but I didn't. But I didn't become drunken. I didn't become drunk. Okay. And drinking alcohol was. Nowadays, even nowadays, I don't drink alcohol. You know, when I went to LA uh, last week, I met with the relatives and some of the relatives. My aunts, she's like, "Oh, so you are drinking?" I'm like, "You are drinking?" I'm like, "Do you, do I look like I'm drinking?" And I just told her that. It doesn't taste so good. I don't know why people drink beer and soju, because it tastes tastes so like it just you, 
It tastes so firm, the fermented. You know, I don't like fermented kimchi because it's uh, filled with fermentations and fungus and all that, right? I don't, I don't know, what's the taste? Sometimes I drink wine on the, on the airplane, like twice a year. You know, people, tr people drink and they want to be drunk because their today, their reality is so hard. They want to forget about their reality. They all, they're always in their past and all that. If, for me, before I went into college, listen to this. Before I went into college, I experienced how good prayer is. I experienced why. This is the question. Why Christ is the answer? Don't just tell yourself Christ is the answer. That faith will be broken down by the, by the wise sayings and teachings of your professors. That faith will be broken down. Why Christ is the answer? I found it in God's word. And not only that, I confirmed the history and the remnants. So when I was living my life as a college student, I knew that my life is history. I always had the sense of history. That's why I had the sense of watchmen when I was in my college campus. I knew that God was making history in Cal State University of Northridge. I was the only remnant there. But this time I went there and I found out that uh, there are so many remnants there and they're evangelizing every single week. Hallelujah. I became the first, the beginning of shining the light of the Cal State Northridge. And two of them are the kids of the pastor that uh, gave, gave me ride to the airport. So we are planning to meet online because these two kids, uh, they really want to be trained. Uh, one of them, it's his daughter, wants to come to Korea and want to uh, in, you know, register in RTS, although she, you know, she doesn't want to be a pastor, but she wants to be trained so much that she wants to come to Korea. She's only like 22 years old, disciple. So I'm planning to connect them to, because they are my, they are my uh, alumni. Can you imagine how I feel? I was the only, the very only and the first remnant in that huge college campus. This college campus was surrounded by uh, the Church of Satan. The co-founder of Church of Satan was living in that valley. And it was surrounded by the, uh, the biggest pornography factories in the world. And also it was surrounded by the, 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 the heresy, the cult, uh, Church of God. They had their own church and their own training center. Every Monday they came into my campus to evangelize one Korean person and one American person as a team. That was the battle that I was fighting. But now remnants are evangelizing there every single, I didn't even know that. Prayer, Genesis chapter two, verse seven. When God created you, he breathed on you. He breathed upon you. And that's what happened in John chapter 20, verse 22. Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit after he, he what? Breathed on them. So for you to focus on prayer and breathing is your lifeline. Okay? So if you are uh, recognizing your breathing, then you are breathing in the uh, right manner. So what did they do in Tyrannus? They did just one thing. Concentration. They gather at synagogues every single uh, weekend. For three months, disciples were set apart. Disciples were set apart at the lecture hall, lecture hall, right? I'm doing that right now. And one thing that they just concentrated on is just one phrase, one sentence, one keyword is God's kingdom. 
they learned about God's kingdom. They enjoyed God's kingdom in their prayer. They tried it. They challenged it for, the, for, for their field. So every day, they, they, they gather around 2 through 4 p.m. Because 2 through 4 p.m. is the hottest, the hottest time of the day for Israel. And all the people in Israel, they are taking a nap. So when everyone else is taking a nap, Apostle Paul gathered the disciples and talked about what? God's kingdom for three months. But we're doing it just for 40 days. Concentration is the key. For those of you who want. And I really pray that the witnesses will come out among the remnants. He will. There's one answer that comes if you prepare your spiritual state. Uh, this is more, yes, it is spiritual state, but this is more like your spiritual vessel. If prayer becomes your lifestyle and focusing on your breathing becomes your lifestyle. So that's why I, it took about, what is it, March. It took about three months. I, uh, I uh, made a request. I made a very humble request to our elders and our you know, staff to get another air filtering. Uh, what do you call this in English? Gongi Changjanggi? Air, air purifier, air purifier, because because uh, uh, you see that little air purifier in the middle right there. It turns red, right? The red means uh, the air condition here is really, really bad. So there's no windows here, so there's no air circulation, right? So we need minimum. We need one more air purifier, and this is not turned on. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I'm so sensitive. Yeah, I tell people I'm sensitive, but I'm not sensitive. You know, I could eat any food. I went to India and ate all the Indian food for two weeks because I'm focusing on breathing. If you are recognizing, doing the self-recognition on your breathing, the first thing that you will recognize is the air condition. So I visited my parents' house very nice house they, they moved to, right? And very nice neighborhood, you know? It was like up in the mountains, right? Air was like, LA, air was so great, you know what I mean? But, but when I arrived in their house, every single windows were closed. I was completely shocked. <laughs> so I started to open the windows. They say it's because it's pretty cold and all that, but it affects your spiritual state. Because oxygen, there is no oxygen that comes out from your body. Do you know that? Oxygen always comes from nature. And that is your lifeline. Oxygen, they activates your cells. Do you know that? Mitochondria? <laughs> That's the engine of the cell. And it... It is activated only by oxygen. Okay, it's very simple. So when you do this, this will come to your remnants. Future will come to you. Why? Future is God in God's hands. Apostle Paul experienced great revival, great evangelism already. But she said, I'm not satisfied. I shall see Rome also. Why? Because he was so hungry for another, you know, great works. He knew the future that is prepared for him. How did he know that? Because he was reading the signpost. When you keep reading the signpost, you know where this road is going, right? He was standing in the court. He was about to be sentenced. God told him, do not be afraid. 
you will testify the gospel in Rome also. So as a prisoner, he was being sent to, to uh, Caesar, but a great storm happened. Storm represents a disaster that nobody can solve. Unsolvable, unsolvable problem happened. But that's when God says, do not be afraid. I've given you all the people that are with you in the ship. I've given you. And you shall testify the gospel before Caesar. Even more, what? Specific picture. Before God said, at Rome, you will testify. But before Caesar, you will testify. So first three people, or two, five people, um, apply today, okay? Just, just feel comfortable, you know, you don't have to worry about it again and again and think about it and tell me like on when, Monday or Tuesday. But just right off the bat, okay? If you're inspired by God. Don't feel pressured, voluntarily, okay? Voluntarily, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you have spoken a very accurate word accurate path and accurate mission to us. Father, may you bless all the remnants here and the evangelists and teachers and parents, even the staff here, to be inspired by the Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, and the Holy Spirit to see the future in advance, to have the preparation and concentration and have the future in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.